Hello everyone and welcome back to the PAC course on Python Digital Forensics. For this section we're going to be focusing on digital forensics in a Windows environment. For this lesson we're going to be learning how to enumerate a directory using our own Python tool. So what we're going to do is develop a Python directory scanner. It will be able to detect folders, files, and accept arguments from the user. The modules that you're going to need in order to complete this lesson are argparse and os. Both of these should be included by default with Python. argparse is an easy way to develop a command line interface. It parses different arguments that the user may provide. The OS module provides OS dependent functionality. This way we can make our Python applications portable between Windows, Linux, and other forms of Unix. We are only going to be using one function from the OS module. We're going to be using Scander. And Scander returns an iterator of OS directory entry objects. Now this is basically saying that Scander will scan our directory for us and return a list of objects that it found. These objects have all sorts of different properties and we're going to learn how to access some of them today. Another simple note is the idea of recursion. This is where we scan a particular directory and then we scan the children of its directory and the children and its children. Now as you can imagine this might go on forever. In fact the NTFS file system structure does not have a max depth. So that means there can be folders inside of folders for infinite number of possibilities. The only thing that will limit is the total path. The only thing that it will limit is the total number of characters in its path. For this reason, for this particular lesson, we're only going to be scanning a top level directory. We'll teach a little bit about recursive actions in the next sections. So let's build our application. Once you have your Windows environment set up, we'll continue building our application. As I stated before, we have two modules in which we're going to import, OS and argparse. As you can see, I have the basic structure set up already. We have our directory walk class, a few different functions, including get arguments, scan a path, and our main function, which we'll call from the if name. Once we instantiate our class, we'll then call the main function. So instead of building the main function first, we're going to build our argument grabber. So what we need to do is use the argparse module. In order to start using argparse, we need to create an instance of an argument parser. One of the arguments this argument parser function takes is the description. This will tell our user what our application does. Now we need to add an argument. So we're going to use our parser variable, call the add argument function. Our argument that we want to provide is the path. This is the path of what we're going to scan. One of its other options is to provide a help. This will tell the user how to use path argument. Now you can continue to use as many arguments as you want, but for this application we're just going to add the one. As soon as our application is done grabbing arguments, we're going to return the parser. Now this might seem backwards as we really haven't defined how we're going to call the functions yet. Now if we return the variable parser, it's just going to give us an argument parser object. We need to actually parse these arguments. The function for doing that is called parse args. Now let's continue with building our main function. We want to obtain our arguments. In our last application, we utilize pulling in arguments from system input. Now we're going to call our get args function. We already know our one argument is the path variable. We can access that variable by calling args by its name. This is because the argparse module sets up our values based on the name we give it. We gave it path. We can then access it from our arg parser with the name path. This will assign args.path to our self.path, our class instance variable. Now once we know what path we want to scan, we can then scan that path. So we're going to call our scan path function. Well first we want to test this, so we're just going to pass our scan path function. Place an R back in argument parser. Now once we run the application, you can see it shows the user how to use our application. This is because we didn't provide a path. So now giving it a path, I'm going to scan my downloads directory. And as you can see, nothing pops up, but this is because we haven't built out the scan path function yet. So let's build that out. So in order to scan a path, we're going to use the OS module. We're going to be calling the scan directory function. What this statement will do, it will scan the directory, given our path, and create an iterable object. With this iterable object, we'll be able to loop through it in Python and look at all the values it returns. So let's write a for loop to go through our iterable object. 
So for each entry in our list of entries, we're going to print the name of that entry. Now each iterable entry has a lot of different properties. We'll go over those in a later lesson. Right now we're just going to pull the name. So now running your application, you should see what's all within the directory that you provide. And there you go. Now we can see that everything that was within the downloads directory. And we can point this to any directory we want. We just scan C and scan C Windows, which will provide a lot more results. Now you might be able to see how useful this will be in building out a better tool. So today, I hope you found that lesson useful. We learned how to enumerate a single directory and populate that list of entries, and then how to access properties of those entries.